Uh, good morning, everybody. As that beautiful song we heard just suggested, uh, ETSC focused this year on the resilient little town of Irwin, Tennessee, the railroad town without a train. For more than 135 years, Irwin's primary industry uh, surrounded the Clinchfield Railroad, known later as CSX. In 2015, uh, the CSX abruptly closed down, laying off 300 workers. Needless to say, this closure dealt a huge blow to Irwin, but the community was determined to bounce back right away. After the closure, a group of young professionals from Irwin convened to create Rise Irwin, an organization designed to rejuvenate, invest, support, and energize the town. Since then, RISE has engaged the town through festivals, revitalization of the downtown district, farmers markets, auctions, and more. In just five years, RISE Irwin has reimagined Irwin's image and made serious strides towards building a 21st century economy. My colleagues are ready today to tell you all about it and suggest where RISE Irwin can go next. Next slide. Good morning. The Appalachian Teaching Project engages students in regional citizens along with a grant from the Appalachian Regional Commission to create a sustainable economic future in the region and improve the quality of life for its residents. Goals and outcomes are working with the community to build an oral history, promote economic transformation, leveraging the region's natural and cultural heritage. Students um, engage building capacity and skills for the next generation and foster sustainability. To meet those goals, our class is writing a retrospective, collaborating with RISE Irwin to find out what RISE Irwin needs are and to document their activities in the last five years, including the SWOT analysis. And we'll present that information. Next slide. Methodology used is interviews with four Rise Irwin leaders and community members, and to read uh, re read over 30 newspaper articles documenting the five year history of the Rise Irwin, research into economic history of Irwin, and scavenger hunt to explore the town of Irwin. Next slide. As these economic statistics show, Irwin continues to lag behind Tennessee averages in terms of per capita income, poverty rate, high school completion, and college completion. Next slide. Clinchfield Railroad operated out of the Irwin Rail Yard. The Clinchfield name came from a Southwest Virginia coal company, and the railroad was initially used primarily for transporting coal. Its sudden closure in 2015 led to the layoff of 300 workers, which was a significant blow to the local economy and a loss of identity to what had for over a century viewed itself as a railroad town. In the early days of Clinchfield Railroad, businesses were set up at various points along the tracks in order to minimize transport costs. One of those was Southern Potteries in Irwin which was a factory that produced porcelain in China using beehive kilns. Each piece of pottery was hand painted and considered an original work of art. At one point, it was one of the nation's top producers. However, it seized operations in 1958 due to increased competition from the global market. National Fuel Services currently employs over 1,000 people and is one of Unicoi County's biggest employers. The company converts highly enriched uranium for use by the US military and in our nation's nuclear power plants. It provides many skilled jobs but poses environmental threats as there have been documented incidents of security violations and hazardous, hazardous leaks. Next slide. In Appalachia, there is a saying of, you pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. But what happens when you don't even have bootstraps to pull up? Jamie Rice is a woman native to Irwin and heard the cries of her community when they were in desperate need, deciding to create an entire avenue of consumerism for small businesses in Irwin. Rice and her business par partner, Kristen Anders, 
created a nonprofit to rejuvenate, invest in, support, and energize Irwin. This was the beginning of RISE. Rice's family owns the Bramble Building, which you can see here in this slide. She wished to see her family's business as well as all of the other small businesses in Irwin prosper, so she came up with the idea of utilizing festivals to create foot traffic within the town. The nonprofit gained momentum in 2016 when they hosted their first festival. Rise started with nothing and soon corralled a mass of volunteers to help Irwin succeed from high school students to the elderly who all wish to see a brighter future for Irwin. Rise currently stands with the new president, Tyler Engel, but are doing no less of the dedicated work it takes to get Irwin back to thriving in the year of 2020. Next slide. As Megan and others have stated, Rise Irwin formed in 2015 as a result of the local CSX rail yard closure. 2016 was their first full year as an organization and it was pivotal for them. Of the three annual events that originated that year, the Irwin Elephant Revival gains the most attention. In an attempt to rectify Irwin's hanging of Mary, a circus elephant, the revival celebrates elephants with numerous events, including the auctioning off of elephant statues, such as the Dolly Parton elephant featured here. Next slide, please. In more recent years, the annual events that began in 2016 have continued alongside newer events. In 2018, RISE collaborated with Unicoi County Schools and shared access to books with students and families of Irwin. Last year, a mural was completed in downtown Irwin by RISE, participants and community volunteers. COVID-19 has led to many event cancellations, but even still, RISE is discussing the potential renovation of the Capitol Theater, an Irwin landmark that is featured in this picture. Next slide, please. RISE Community Participation. Community awareness of RISE Irwin is large within the surrounding area as seen through the involvement, participation, and feedback to be seen surrounding RISE events and also through their social media presence. The RISE Facebook page creates consistent content ranging from local school schedules to new businesses in downtown Irwin while also updating festival and event information. In this way, they create a space for tourists and locals and the page is appreciated by, as noted, by its almost 3.5 thousand followers. In regard to in-person community involvement, it started strong and has remained so since RISE's first event, the Elephant Revival in 2016. Another RISE event, the Great Outdoor Festival, saw in 2018 between four and 5,000 people attend. Religious community participation can be seen through different church involvement in the annual nativity parade that RISE puts together, while educational involvement is seen through efforts like the 2018 Aspire Book Bus, which through community support and a large amount of donations, was able to reach over 500 kids that summer and help to improve reading accuracy and comprehension rates by large percentages. Perhaps the most noteworthy in community participation, in 2019, Elizabethan High School students won NPR's first student podcast challenge, talking to RISE members about the town's history and how the Elephant Revival works towards positive change. This allows RISE's mission to reach a global level. Next slide, please. Along with interviewing RISE members and looking into the history of Irwin, Tennessee, our class also created a SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Some of the strengths facing the town of Irwin and RISE Irwin is that they successfully addressed the image of the town that hung the elephant. They are also self-reliant, resilient, and community-based. Some of the weaknesses facing the town and Rise Irwin is that they lack diversity and they have no real plan on how to hold certain festivals and events um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Some opportunities that they have is that they have an opportunity to address the dialogue surrounding their reputation as a sundown town. And they also have the opportunity to revitalize the Capitol Theater, an old movie theater based in the heart of downtown Irwin. Some of the threats facing the town include a reliance on corporations such as the CSX Railroad and the NFS that was previously mentioned, and they also face out <laughs> they also face out migration due to a struggling economy and a lack of job opportunities. Um, next slide, please. 
Let the Mountains Rise, proposed as a Mercado Agricola, Pabellón Mexicano. Let the Mountains Rise, the Sunshine Mountains of Me Mexico and Tennessee, and God Bless Rise Irwin Farm Market 2021. While this region may know of the many assets Unicoi County offers, we're launching a campaign to let the world know. Tyler Engel, Chair of Rise Irwin, October 7th, 2020. El mundo es aquí, the world is here. 3,500 estimated Latin population documented, 10 mile radius of Irwin, over 25,000 in a 20 mile radius. Diversity, we know from uh, profit and nonprofit agencies, Deloitte Touche, management agency studies, uh, for a number of years now, diversity is economic growth and good health. Cultural appreciation and understanding is community. Leadership shared, board membership, leaders, training, education, statistics is gain for all of us. Mountains Mexico and Tennessee share story in pride. Indeed, let the mountains rise. The sunshine of hope, possibility, and dream today with Latin family, as my brothers and sisters, with our pioneer families and centuries of ancestors. Next slide. Alliance with the Black community in gatherings of music, art, and religious gatherings. Irwin's history as a sundown town following the 1918 expulsion of the Black community is a stigma that still haunts the town today. Inclusion of Black vendors and artists in local activities, as well as joint church services, could possibly step to improve the situation. We see the current lack of diversity as a main obstacle in revitalization of Irwin. Next slide. In our interview with Rice, she stated that we could either stay still and die or move forward. Rice has done their best in moving forward and continue to do so even as they face new struggles that they never have before. For this step in the project, we conducted four separate interviews, written a retrospective with opportunities and suggestions to improve sustainability, as well as create a SWOT analysis. The retrospective is part of building a relationship with Irwin creating more opportunities for them to strive toward in the future, as well as gathering their oral history to use in future grant writing prospects that we will present to RISE at the end of the semester. The future of Irwin is looking towards local businesses, ecotourism, and sustainability. This includes the Sassafras Noon Herb Festival in 2019 created by Michelle Budin, pictured in this slide, who participated as an interviewee in our project. Our next step in the project is to gather economic data to reassure that RISE has made a difference in Irwin regarding small business consumerism and has followed up with a COVID-19 plan. Irwin is filled with Appalachian people who will not lay down and rot. The town folk have continually said, no one is coming to save us. We have to save ourselves. Irwin serves as an example of just one of the many towns that has been affected by the shutting down of the coal industry as well as being a prime example of pushing on even when it feels as though the whole world has neglected you. People in rural Appalachia constantly deal with the battle of neglection and isolation, but it just goes to show how strong our people are to persevere amongst it. Thank you all.